Now think about the resistor. First of all, we draw the resistor either like that or with the, the, the simple rectangular box. Um, this is the symbol for the AC waveform right here um, that we're sending through there. I guess if we were doing a little bit better here, we would put in a um, triangle wave, okay, instead of a uh, sine wave, because we did use a triangle wave. Voltage versus current is the plot. So what should this look like if we have a resistor of 10 ohms? Um, we should see a slope for this voltage versus current. Remember that if we plot voltage is equal to some um, voltage on the Y and current on the X, the slope should be the resistance from Ohm's law. That's a natural fallout. And we should get something that looks, oh, say like this. And we could just analyze that slope. It's a constant resistance. It's not changing. It's certainly obeying, obeying Ohm's law. It is, a, it is a function. It shows a 1 um, for every independent value for current. There's one and only one voltage that produces um, that current. I know that word produces. I just kind of switched the dependency and independency. Um, but we plotted it this way, voltage versus current, so that the slope is simply resistance. What happens with each resistor if, if I plot 33 ohms on this same graph? 33 is bigger than 10, and so what should happen to the slope on the graph? Yes, you should see it steeper. And then finally, if we do 100 ohms on this graph, we should see it even steeper still, where each resistor plots on voltage versus current as a straight line. Slope is resistance, so the slope should get steeper. Um, with each higher resistor, okay? The analysis should simply be finding the slope of each of these lines and then compare the slope to the expected value that's written on the circuit board. And we don't call this an accepted value, okay? It's not um, some lookup table that the whole world agrees with that that resistor should be 10 ohms, for instance. That's just the... the ex um, expected in the sense that, well, when, it was, when this resistor was made, they were hoping to have it at 10 ohms. Remember, there's a tolerance of either 5 or 10 percent. When you find the uh, percent difference, um, you can do it this way. You can take the absolute value of the difference, and you can either divide here by the average, of the two numbers, or you, in this case, I guess you could divide by the value that's written on the circuit board. Um, I'll leave that up to you for this particular experiment. And then, so difference divided by average, or difference divided by what's written on the circuit board, and then multiply that by 100%. So you're going to state my 10 ohm resistor, I measured the slope to be this ohms, and the percent difference is this. Okay, And do that for the 33 and the 100 ohm. Mine kind of looks like this, where I've shown the, the calculation for each, each line, and I've displayed the, each resistor with its value measured and then the, the percent difference.